uh, next up, we're going to have uh, Kevin Burgess. So uh, Kevin Burgess has been with the Federal Highway Administration for over 20 years in many different roles, including safety, planning, and traffic operations. Prior to FHWA, he worked as an operations engineer for the West Virginia DOT for seven years. He also currently serves as a Florida Division Safety Engineer, where he manages all aspects of the safety program, as well as being the MUTCD coordinator. And with that, I'll hand things over to Kevin. Kevin, you should now have control of the presentation. All right, thank you very much, Kristen. Really appreciate that and really appreciate uh, being included in the uh, group of speakers today. And so just wanted to go through and basically give a federal perspective on local road safety and, and again, um, how important it is that, you know, we're collaborating both at the local state and at the federal level. And so, again, as you can see here, uh, basically the title of my presentation is actually FHWA's commitment to local road safety. And really what I wanted to talk about today was to talk about priorities, um, which obviously uh, the two secretaries a minute ago, Secretary Gwynn and Secretary Nandum, both gave you know a lot of uh, you know very good information about you know from the FDOT and the um, you know from the secretary's perspective and so I just want to talk a little bit about again priorities and also about funding obviously when it comes to federal highway administration we get a lot of questions oftentimes about funding itself and since you know one of the things we we are a funding agency um, and provide those funds so we'll talk a little bit about that and then lastly we'll talk about training and technical assistance, which I think is very important to mention simply because we, you know, do a lot of training. And so that is definitely something that, um, you know, we wanna go over, you know, our commitment to that. And with that said, uh, you know, if you go and you look at actually the USDOT, uh, which is obviously our, you know, the agency that Federal Highway Administration falls under, you will find very quickly that priority stands out because you see right at top, you know, that's it's safety first. And that really is a multimodal thing. And I think that is one of the things we really wanted to, I wanted to stress today was that we um, and our sister agencies, and probably the one from a safety perspective that we spend the most time collaborating with is NHTSA. Uh, so I think most everyone on this call would probably be familiar with, again, Federal Highway Administration. We handle uh, more of the infrastructure side. And then, of course, you've got NHTSA or the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, which handles more of the behavioral and the vehicular side. So again, as sister agencies under the USDOT, we certainly share a common um, passion for safety. And so I think that's one of the things that really stands out and I think would stand out to anyone that's, if you've ever been to any of our training courses, uh, I think you would definitely say that our um, FHWA employees uh, that are trainers, I mean, that are doing the training definitely have a passion for safety and that definitely comes through when they're, you know, both giving uh, training as well as technical assistance. So again, I mentioned earlier that we would, you know, again, talking about um, HSIP funding is one of the things that we get a lot of questions on. And, you know, the, the Highway Safety Improvement Program um, has been a core federal aid program since 2005. So just to kind of put that in perspective, you're talking about an actual um, major uh, funding program within our entire um group of funding uh, pots that we have. But again, safety, again, it stands out. And because a lot of people would ask, you know, when we say that safety is a priority, the question often comes out is, you know, do you put your money where your mouth is? And I think that's where we've definitely elevated safety to that. And the HSIP program as a whole really has a singular purpose. And that purpose is to reduce traffic fatalities and serious injuries, which again, we can all agree upon. And so definitely want to focus a little bit on that. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about the funding aspect. So one of the things when we talk about um, the current, um, and many people on this call would be familiar with highway bills. Um, again, the federal highway bills are typically anywhere from five to seven year um, highway acts, I guess you could say, and the current one that we 
um, are in right now, which is in a continuation, which is the uh, FAST Act or the Fixing America Surface Transportation Act. And that one actually started with fiscal year 2016. And you can see here that again, we're talking about HSIP and again, how much funding we're actually putting into directly into the safety throughout the entire United States. And you can see here that the funding started at a little over two and a, a quarter billion dollars nationwide, um, all the way up to getting close to two and a half billion dollars by 2020. Obviously, since we're in a continuation right now, we're obviously in fiscal year 2021. Um, and that number again is a, a, a continuation there with, um, the 2.4 or nearly two and a half billion dollars. Uh, but then you know you think, well, that's that's nationwide. Um, but you know, if you look at what does Florida actually see itself, uh, as I put here on the screen, Florida's fiscal year 2021 HSIP um, is actually $124 million. So uh, Florida actually has the third largest HSIP program um, in the country. And just to give you an idea a little bit more about actually how the HSIP program works, you know, it does have to be from a data-driven process, which I think we can all agree upon is very important. We obviously want um, to have a, you know, data-driven process that's actually showing us where we should actually put the funding at. Um, I also wanted to highlight that the HSIP program is also one of our most flexible uh, funding programs because, it, in fact, it may very well be the most flexible in the fact that it can be used on all public roads. So it doesn't have to be only on federal aid. Um, it doesn't have to be on only state only uh, or state owned roads. It can be on any public road. Um, and then lastly, it does need to have a strategic approach, which um, I just quickly will go over the fact that, you know, each state uh, does have a strategic highway safety plan. Obviously, Florida does. Uh, Florida is actually in the process of their update to that. And so again, that's a four to five year plan that is strategic and how are you going to address safety in that particular state? So again, in order to meet, um, you know, to make a HSIP project, again, it has to come from a data-driven process and it also has to, um, align with that strategic highway safety plan. The next area that I really want to talk quite a bit about is actually training because Federal Highway Administration provides a lot of training uh, throughout the country, but especially here in Florida. Um, what I can tell you is that Federal Highway Administration, as you see on the screen here, um, just since 2014, uh, we are showing that we've been averaging 15 safety training courses in Florida each and every year. Um, obviously last year, um, 2020 with the pandemic definitely, you know, did have a few issues with um, a little bit of the face-to-face -face training, but we still were providing virtual training at that time. But again, that average is actually based on um, in-person training from 2014 through 2020. Um, and so we've definitely been, and as you can see here, this particular um, you can see where some of the training is at, but I actually want to go a little further with that and actually show you that by the graphs here on the, um, where we have the state of Florida, the darker shading shows you where we're actually have been providing that training over that same time period. As you can see here in the upper left corner, we have roadway departure training, uh, which we've done. Um, a lot of that has, was done in central Florida, again, the I-4 corridor and in northern Florida. Um, a lot of that was done in um, the more rural um, districts in the north. And as you can see, if you start moving to the right, uh, the bike ped training has been a little bit more, you know, almost throughout the entire state. Um, but of course, you can see there that a lot has been done in central Florida as well as southern Florida. And then intersection training has probably been our most um, uh, widely spread out training that we've given. And also um, between that and bike ped training has been a major focus the last several years. And as you can see here, that uh, particular training has been done both in the North, the Central and Southern Florida. So another major initiative that we've had going on 
for around 10 years now is actually our Everyday Counts um, initiative, which again, uh, or as we shorten it as EDC, but basically the idea behind EDC was to basically get um, innovations out to the entire country and get those out there to where um, basically states and locals could both be utilizing them to again from a safety perspective to reduce fatalities and serious injuries and one of our biggest um, initiatives was actually STEP which is safe transportation for every pedestrian and we'll go into a little bit more detail on it use it as an example because it actually was part of our everyday counts four and everyday counts five initiatives so this essentially went from 2017 all the way through 2020 uh, and we just concluded this but in this one we actually were able to uh, partner which we often do with the florida ltap center as well as fdot and so that was a great partnership there where we were able to provide the trainers to actually put on the step training um, the ltap center handled all the logistics and registration, everything like that. And then FDOT, of course, provided all of the locations and also provided assistance because we actually, one of the things I like to focus when I talk about our FHWA training is we try to make sure that our training is as customized as possible. So what you see when you maybe go to a course that Federal Highway Administration is putting on is you may not have seen the legwork that happens prior to that with where our trainers and instructors actually reach out um, to both the locals and the, the state, especially to FDOT and get as much information as possible so that we can customize the training to Florida itself. And so that's very important. And so with this, I think this was a very successful um, grouping of courses for STEP. And as you can see here on the next slide, we were able to put step uh, workshops out in 11 different locations. We were in North Florida, we were in Chipley, Lake City, and Jacksonville. We were also all over Central Florida. Basically, we were we did a, a course at Tampa, we did a course in Deland, Melbourne, as well as in Orlando. And then we followed that up with South Florida by going to Sarasota, Fort Myers, and then Fort Lauderdale and Miami. And I definitely wanted to bring this one and highlight this particularly because I was talking about a commitment to local agency or local road safety was the fact that in a typical situation, we would normally put on, uh, just because our instructors again are so busy and they're all over the country putting on training, but we would typically put on for Florida on a typical course, maybe three courses at most. We would typically do a North, Central, and South. But as you can see here, we did divide them that way, but we actually went out and tried to hit as many locations in each of those areas. So instead of doing three training courses, we actually took on what was actually a pretty daunting task. Um, our instructors ended up being in Florida for three consecutive weeks uh, in uh, late January and early February of 2020 and where we could actually get out and be as close to the locals as possible. Again, not just going to maybe the um, the actual district headquarters, for example, we actually tried to get out into the local areas as much as possible. And again, we greatly appreciate all the help we were given by uh, both the LTAP Center as well as FDOT to actually pull this off. And it was very successful. I think we had, um, I think, well over 400 attendees between all of the uh, all of the different workshops. So it was a lot of, lot of hard work, but it definitely paid off. Uh, the next area we really get into a lot is technical assistance. And as Kristen mentioned, like in my bio early on, I think one of the things to point out is that you, know, you may also know Federal Highway Administration from the MUTCD. Uh, we are the ones that actually publish the uh, manual on uniform traffic control devices. And so we also provide technical assistance on that. You can get that either from a local division office, like in, in this case, um, I'm located in Tallahassee. Um, but then you also, we have our entire MUTCD team in our headquarters office, which is actually, again, the one that publishes the MUTCD. But again, with technical assistance, we also would divide that up 
amongst all of our um, focus areas. And again, for focus areas for safety, we typically think of roadway departure, we think of intersection, and we think of pedestrian and bike safety. And so again, we provide that technical assistance in all of those. And so I think it's very important to mention that. And you saw the way we, we put on the training as well. That was also divided between the three focus areas. Another area where Federal Highway Administration has been very uh, much at the forefront of safety is with our proven safety countermeasures. And many of you probably have seen a lot of these. And these go back all the way back to really 2009, 2010, where we first started publishing these proven safety countermeasures, where we were seeing things around the country where people were, were doing things. And then of course we got involved as well, uh, coordinated and collaborated with, with those state and locals that were doing that. And then we wanna, obviously we don't wanna keep anything that's a safety uh, that's effective. We won't wanna keep any of that Secret. So obviously the biggest point of our proven safety countermeasures was to get the word out to everyone. And, and actually, as you can see here on the screen, it may be a little small, but if you see a little red uh, next to some of these countermeasures, um, in 2018, we actually released a newer group of um, actually six new safety countermeasures uh, to add to our entire list. And if you go to our particular website under the Office of Safety, you will find uh, there are fact sheets on each one of uh, these countermeasures. You can also find information, more information about each one, but you can also find probably more importantly, you can find contact information on who to reach out to at Federal Highway Administration that can give you technical assistance um, and help you with any of those that if you have questions about those. And that kind of leads up to one of my last slides, which is actually um, one area that we've really grown in in the last several years, starting in 2017 and 2018, we really started looking at, you heard me mention earlier that each state has a strategic highway safety plan. And obviously we find that being as strategic and data driven as you can be um, is a great thing for reducing um, fatalities and serious injuries when it comes to having strategic direction to your safety and how you're actually uh, trying to impact that. And so we find that, you know, that doesn't stop at the state level. Um, obviously it can, you know, it can go to a regional level, um, but more importantly, it can go all the way down to the county or even municipality. And so, or the, any local agency um, could actually do a local road safety plan. And so that's one of the things we got involved with um, in the last, especially the last three years. And so as I put here, this is something else that if you would have any interest in, you could also reach out to uh, the Federal Highway Administration on this as well, because we've actually been partnering and Florida actually participated in a couple of our different pilots. We did have one pilot um, in Palm Beach County, which was I think done in 2017 and 2018, uh, where we actually had a consultant and a uh, Federal Highway Administration group, Office of Safety, that actually worked directly uh, with Palm Beach County on uh, development of a uh, local road safety plan for that county by itself. Now, we did also do with uh, a pilot um, in 2018 with several counties, actually, I think there were at least two, if not three counties in um, Florida that actually took advantage of that. I know one of those was Alachua up in the Gainesville area. They participated in that. And there were some others that participated in basically where Federal Highway Administration led the county through a uh, almost like a self-driven local road safety plan um, development. And so that was very important as well. So I definitely wanted to leave you with that because again, we talk a lot about um, safety and making sure that we're strategic with how we uh, address it. And I think that this is very important to show you what you can actually do. And so I think uh, I would definitely suggest if you are, have not checked out Federal Highway Administration's uh, website on, again, either training or technical assistance uh, to definitely check that out and see what we've got, but you can also reach out um, directly um, to the LTAP Center, they can certainly get you in touch with uh, with us. Um, again, I'm local in the Tallahassee office. We do also have, uh, Federal Highway Administration does also have a, an Orlando 
a, a smaller Orlando office as well. So with that said, I am uh, going to conclude my presentation. There is contact information on the slide. And with that, I'll hand it back over to the LTAP Center. All right, thank you very much, Kevin. Some great information there.